Before we begin our discussion on the velocity selector, let's review a very basic particle accelerator. We looked at one in a couple units ago in electrostatics where we had a series of parallel plates and in between those plates we put a charge. The charge would be repelled from one plate and attracted towards the other plate and experience an acceleration and pick up speed. It turns out the physics behind these were very, very simple. Let's imagine a charge on the left hand side. And let's say we have a charge or an ion that's negatively charged. So if the charge is negative, we would want this plate on the left to be negative, to repel it. And the one on the right, we would want it to be positive, to attract it, so that we can accelerate that charge across the gap. The goal is to determine how fast that charge is going, that negative charge is going by the time it emerges out this little hole on the end. So we're trying to find out what the velocity is. Very basic conservation of energy will help us determine what that velocity is. On the left hand side while the particle is hovering, it initially starts with potential energy, electric potential energy. And obviously as it crosses that potential difference, that voltage across the gap, that electric potential energy is going to get converted into kinetic. And we end up with a very simple formula. The electric potential energy of a charge across a potential difference is simply the value of the charge itself times the voltage across the gap. Kinetic energy, as usual, is just one half m times the velocity squared. Very simple equation allows us to figure out what the velocity is as it emerges out the hole on the right hand side. However, there are some assumptions we're making here when we talk about this formula. One of the main assumptions is that all of the potential energy is getting converted into kinetic as suggested by the formula. However, typically these charges are made by an ion source that ejects the charges in between the parallel plates in the first place. An ion source is typically a radioactive element that ejects these high energy particles in between the space so that they can be accelerated. Now you can see almost immediately where this assumption might break down. The ion source may eject these particles with an initial energy. So in other words, they might actually come out of the ion source with some kinetic energy to start with. This kinetic energy initial is very difficult to predict. We don't know exactly how fast it will be ejecting those charges. In fact, there will be a range of velocities. So what that does is it makes our value of our final velocity unknown. We actually don't know what that value is. We can get a fairly decent idea of the range of that velocity, but to actually accurately predict what that speed is, is basically impossible with this particular configuration. So what we do is we then fire this charge with a range of velocity through something called a velocity selector. Let's look at how that works. Below you see a typical picture of a velocity selector. And you'll notice once again there's some parallel plates, a positive plate on the top, a negative plate on the bottom, and our charge is going flying in between these parallel plates. The one main difference is that now we're going to introduce a magnetic field that's into the page. The crossing of these magnetic fields and electric fields will allow us to accurately predict what that speed is as the charge emerges. You see on the left hand side our source. This would be the particle accelerator that we talked about in the previous screen. So the charges are coming out of this source with a range of velocities. We want only certain ones to actually get through. So the velocity selector, what it's going to do is allow us to predict the final velocity that's coming in a straight line. As the charge enters the plates, it'll experience two forces, one due to the magnetic field and one due to the electric field. If the magnetic force is bigger than the electric force, it will curl upwards. If the electric force is bigger than the magnetic force, it will be pushed downwards. The bottom line is that if those two forces are not in balance, the charge will either be deflected up or down and not travel in a straight path. Only those charges with the correct velocity will emerge in a line that's along the dotted line. 
Let's look at a simple free body diagram to get us started. We'll begin by drawing our charge simply as a dot. Let's label the forces that are acting on this charge. For this particular diagram, we'll assume that this charge is positive. First of all, we see that the charge is moving to the right, so we must use our right hand rule to figure out which direction the magnetic force will be. Our fingers will be into the page, our thumb will be to the right, and if you position your hand in this fashion, you will see that the palm of your hand is facing up, and you'll get a magnetic force that is directed upwards to the top of the page. Now from the diagram you see that there's a positive plate on the top and a negative plate on the bottom that is creating an electric field facing downwards. This will in turn push the charge, which is positive, toward the negative plate. So we will also get an electric force directed in the opposite direction. Now the goal is we want the charge to move in a straight line, undeflected. So there cannot be a net force acting on the charge. So this simply means that these two forces have to be balanced. The magnetic force has to equal the electric force for this to work. Now we know that the magnetic force is a very, very simple equation. QVB, and we see the formula up top. Q is the value of the charge, V is the velocity that it's entering the plates, and B is the value of the external magnetic field. The electric force on the bottom is simply Q times the value of the electric field. Another simple equation. If we link these together, we get QVB equals QE, and you'll notice right away that the Q's, the value of the charge, is actually superfluous. It makes no difference. So it doesn't matter what the charge is itself. All that matters is what the velocity is when it, when it enters the velocity selector itself. If we solve for V, we get our equation for a velocity selector, which is simply V equals the value of the electric field divided by the value of the magnetic field. So in other words, if we know what the ratio of E to B is, we know what the velocity should be to emerge undeflected on the other side. So this is known as a velocity selector, and what it does is it allows us to filter out all those other speeds that don't satisfy that condition. The only ones that will come through that velocity selector undeflected are the ones that satisfy this ratio. Now the only other thing that you may have to remember is how to calculate the electric field between parallel plates. And if you remember back to our electrostatics unit, the electric field formula for parallel plates is just the voltage across the plates or the potential difference across the plates divided by the separation of the plates themselves, V over D. So that'll allow you sometimes to figure out how to calculate the top of that equation, the value of the electric field.